In this video, we're going to learn how to make our own string concatenation function in C that works the same way as the strcat function in the string.h library. So if we include the string.h library, there is a function called strcat in this library that concatenates together two strings. The strcat function accepts a destination and a source as arguments and the function will concatenate together the two strings, storing the result into the destination. So the first thing we'll do is create a destination car array. We'll have here car destination. And we're going to make this car array much larger than it needs to be. We'll have here 1024. So this car array can store 1024 characters. We'll just store into this car array here the string first which is going to be six characters total when we include the special null terminator character that ends the string. Then we'll create a source string. We'll have here car source, and we'll store into this car array second. Now we'll call the strcat function. We'll have here strcat, and we'll pass it destination and source. Then we'll output destination after calling this function. We'll have here printf result colon percent s backslash n and we'll output the string stored in destination. So if we save, compile, and run the program, we get first, second, and the strings have been concatenated. So now let's build our own version of this function. We'll put an underscore in front of the function name for our version of the function. Now the official function returns a pointer to the destination. So we'll do the same thing. We'll have car pointer as the function return type and the function will accept the destination and the source as arguments. So we'll have here car star destination and then const car star source for the source. We have const in the case of the source because we're not going to modify the source. So we'll copy this and then we'll supply our own definition of the function down here. Now in memory, the source and destination car arrays look like this. The car arrays contain the strings first and second, and each string is terminated with the special null terminator character that ends the string. So here we have the null terminator character in each string. What we need to do is copy the source string into the destination. We want to start copying the string where the null terminator character is in the destination car array. So here we want to copy S and then here we want to copy E and then C and so on. But in order to do this, we need to first figure out where the null terminator character is in the destination car array. So first we'll do that. Down here, we'll declare an int variable i and we'll initialize it to zero. We're going to use i to find the index of the null terminator character in the destination. So i is initially going to be zero. It's initially going to be here. We can write a loop that will keep checking to see if the character in the destination car array at the index i is equal to the null terminator character and until it is, we'll keep on advancing i. So down here, we'll have while the character in the destination car array doesn't equal the null terminator character, we're going to continue to increment i by one with each loop iteration. So what's going to happen is this loop is going to continue to advance i by one until eventually i reaches the index where the null terminator character is found. Now we know where to start copying the source string. We're going to create another loop with another counter variable j, and j is going to go from the index zero up until the null terminator character in the source string. Now as we increment j, which is keeping track of our index in the source string, We'll also increment i, which is keeping track of our position in the destination car array. So here, we'll copy s into this index of the destination car array. 
Then we'll increment both i and j so the next character gets copied into the next index of the destination car array. And the algorithm will continue to proceed like this. So let's implement this loop now. Down here, we're going to declare another counter variable j. We'll have here j is equal to zero. We're going to keep this second loop going so long as we haven't yet reached the null terminator character in the source string. So, so long as the source at the index j doesn't equal the null terminator character, we're going to continue this loop. And what we'll do is copy from the source into the destination. We're going to copy into the destination at the index i, the character in the source at the index j. And then we'll increment both i and j. So after this loop is done, the source and destination will look like this. We'll increment j and increment i and copy o. Then we'll increment j and increment i and copy n. We'll increment j and increment i and copy d. Then we'll increment j and increment i. And this time though, we'll have found the null terminator character in the source string. So what we need to do now is add the null terminator character onto the end of the destination string to end the string. And the index that i is set to by the end of that loop is exactly where we need to put the null terminator character. So down here, we'll have destination at the index i is equal to that special null terminator character. Now finally, we're going to return destination. So we return a pointer to the destination from this function. So now we can test out our version of the function. Up here, we're going to call our version of the function now with an underscore in front of the function name. So we can save, compile, and run our program. And again, we get result first, second. But this time, we're using our own version of the function. One small improvement we could make to the function is to use the type size underscore t instead of using int for our counter variables because size underscore t can store larger non-negative integers and can therefore handle larger strings. If we save, compile, and run the program, the behavior is going to be the same. So this is how we can build our own strcat string concatenation function in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.